All right, more quadratics. Math on 3C starts talking about something called a quadratic equation. And actually, chapter four is all about quadratic equations. So let's start by taking a minute to look at the relationship between here's a quadratic function. And what in the world is a quadratic equation? This quadratic function we could graph. And as you know, we've talked about how many x-intercepts it has. It might be up here and have none. It might touch the x-axis at one point and have one. It might cross it twice and have two. Now here's what's special about those. Those x-intercepts of the function are what we call the solutions of the equation. Now we still haven't looked at what in the world I mean by an equation, but this is a super key idea built between chapters three and four. The x-intercepts of the function are the solutions of the equation. Now, if you think about it, the x-intercepts, every x-intercept is special because it has a y value of zero. So y value of zero means this function looks like this when I go to solve it to find my x-intercepts. To solve it to find my x-intercepts. Solutions to the equation give me the x-intercepts of the function. Okay, so we're still working with functions. We're looking for their x-intercepts. And to do that, we need to learn how to solve the equations because those solutions are going to give us those intercepts. So what in the world do we do? Well, there are lots of options. Let me clear my page. And one of the most um, slick ways, I guess, <laughs> what if I gave you this? And I said, hey, where are the x-intercepts on this function? I can put zero in for y and get there and go, this looks familiar. This is something that I used way back in Foundations 10, and I would factor it. Now, imagine that you couldn't see these two things, right? What if, bang, I tell you I've got two things behind that rectangle. And when I multiply them together, I get zero. What can you tell me about the two things? Something times something is zero. One of those somethings has to be zero. When I have x minus 4 times x plus 2 is 0, either this one is 0 or this one is 0. And I solve these linear equations using the same old skills we've always got. And there are my solutions. These are solutions to that equation. This function, oops, how about, I think about what I'm writing, and there we go, has x-intercepts at 4 and negative 2. Now, what does that mean? I know this parabola hits those two points. I don't know where the vertex is because I haven't found it. But I know it opens up and it hits my x-axis at those two points. So you see the tie between the equation and the function. Now, if you want to see it, what if I am on desmos.com and I've gone and I've typed my equation into, into the box and I did that before I started the video. And just a caution, because when I typed it in, this is what it showed me. And I've had lots of students in the history of whatever say, well, it's a line. No, it's not. It's just zoomed in. And if you scroll your mouse wheel back out or drag your graph around, you can find it and see that, nope, this is a parabola. 
and there's the equation which I just solved using factoring but there are my two x-intercepts those same points they are the x-intercepts for this function they are the solutions for that equation so what if let's clear my page what if it doesn't factor nice right what if um and i'm gonna cheat and find one because if i make it up um y equals let's go 3x squared plus 6x plus 1 oops and i ask you where are the x intercepts or of course i could also say what if i gave you this equation and i said solve both really mean do the same process and the first thing you're always going to try does it factor right and i'm going to scan that and go it might factor but it's sure not pretty i'm not even going to try i'm going to leave that alone right as it is and instead i'm going to complete the square i'm going to pull the three out x squared plus two right six divided by three is going to give me two move the plus one to the outside half of two is one squared is one add it and out here subtract three times the one like so so now i have zero equals three i'm going to factor my trinomial collect my integers on the end there it is i can see my vertex nice and neat but wait a minute we weren't supposed to find a vertex we were supposed to solve it we're supposed to figure out what x equals how are we going to do that i need a new page hang on i don't remember whether i think it was minus two like so and now if we want to solve this and i've gone and put a y there instead of zero if we want to solve this and get y or x by itself i'm going to start by moving my two and how i'm going to do that i'm going to add two so two equals three times x plus one all squared i'm going to divide by three do it to one side i have to do it to the other Now here's the trick and you should have realized by now that when we talk about x intercepts or solutions a lot of the time we have two answers right because there's your parabola is hitting your x-axis twice when we take the square root of this because that's how we undo squared when we take the square root of two-thirds there's two answers because there might be a positive answer and there might be a negative answer and so we do this on this side, my root gets rid of my 2. And x still isn't by itself, so I subtract 1 from both sides. Now, this left side, what ends up happening is we subtract 1. This value on a graph is really hard to, to read exactly. That's why we need another method. And you're going to find out in chapter four, there's all kinds of ways to do this. This is just one of them. But this is one way to solve and find your x-intercepts.